So, maybe you've been in this situation too. About five months ago, I was bringing up a new embedded device at the office. And like many of these bring ups, one of the first steps is to plug in a monitor and a keyboard and start playing around with the console on the device. And what I found was that this pattern was pretty common for me. Like I was constantly lugging a keyboard and mouse all over the office. I wanted some better way. And so I came up with one uh, based on the Raspberry Pi and this new video capture card that came out this year. Uh, here's the card and the Pi. And what I've got going on here is the Pi is being powered by the laptop that's plugged into. And the HDMI is presenting a fake monitor to the laptop. So once it's all plugged in, you can just pop over to any web browser and point it at the Raspberry Pi. It'll show the current video view from the computer and allow you to interact with it using the mouse and keyboard. Any additional um, keystrokes you normally can't type in a browser, you should be able to access from the bottom of the screen. So that gives you all the features that you might need for basic use of a computer. Uh, if you want to add additional features that you might need for your use case, uh, whatever target device that you've got maybe need some additional keys or need some other changes to this, well, you can modify the code pretty easily. And I'll show you in just a moment how to set that up. Um, once it's installed uh, like this and you can access the target, the next step is to um, set up a development environment and connect to it. So here's the development environment that I've been using. It's Visual Studio Code with the remote development plugin. That gives me access to the device over SSH. It gives me the file system on the left so that I can make changes to the HTML code, the readme, and so on and so forth. Uh, it also gives me access to a terminal here where I can make the software and uh, allows me to check out things like current CPU utilization of the decoder. Um, if you have the thread names turned on, that's helpful here. And for um, logging, you can look at this um, service here, the KVM underscore WebRTC, which is doing most of the work. And you can look at the, um, you know, statistics like stop this for a second. So statistics like, you know, what's the average size of a video frame, minimum size, max size in the last 10 seconds. This is the um, JPEGs coming from the HDMI input. And here's the compression ratio we're achieving with H.264. And then um, some stats on how long the decoder and encoder are taking. Because it's decoding JPEG from the capture card and then re-encoding to H.264 at a constant bitrate for WebRTC video streaming. 